Welcome. This is my monthly update on astronomical events that will be occurring in May of 2014. The news this month is dominated by the possibility of a major meteor storm. But first, let's deal with near-Earth objects. These are asteroids that pass relatively close to the Earth and can pose a danger to us. But as you can see, in May, there's rather a large number that are going to come close to us, about 50. But only one of them, an asteroid called 2014 HL129, will come within one lunar distance. And that asteroid is only 10 meters across so won't pose much of a threat to us. On the 5th and 6th of May, we have the peak of the Eta Aquarid meteor shower. This is one of the two meteor showers associated with Halley's Comet. Do you know what the other one is called? They are best seen at about 3 a.m. in the morning, low in the southeast. There's going to be a waxing crescent moon, so conditions are very favorable to view the meteors. And this is supposed to be a relatively intense shower with about 60 meteors per hour. On the 10th of May, Saturn will be at opposition. That means if you want to see it, go out at midnight and look directly south. It'll be the bright, untwinkling star high in the sky. On the 11th of May, it's Mother's Day in the United States. Interestingly, in other parts of the world, Mother's Day is defined astronomically. It is the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is the 40 days leading up to Easter. Easter is defined as the first Sunday after the, the first full moon following the vernal equinox. So it changes around from, to, from year to year. And of course, you've already missed it if you live in the UK. Interestingly, the first computer program I ever wrote in Fortran was to determine the dates of Easter for the next 100 years. Unfortunately, I got it wrong. On the 14th of May, the moon is full. At this time of year, it is called the flower moon. Also on May 14th, the moon occults Saturn. This is a relatively common event. Unfortunately, this time it is only visible from the Southern Hemisphere. So Australia and New Zealand are the only places where you'll get a chance to see this. This is Comet Lanier. It doesn't look like much, does it? It is a rather faint comet because it doesn't produce very much dust. In the early hours of the 24th of May, Earth will pass near to its orbit. <clears throat> when we do pass near to its orbit, we're likely to encounter quite a lot of dust. But not from the recent comet, but from one of its passages over 150 years ago. It is likely to produce a very high rate of meteors. People are estimating between 100 and 2,000 meteors per hour. That is a major meteor shower or even a storm level. So where will we see this? It is in the constellation of Camelopardus. Where on earth is that? Well, it's an obscure constellation pretty close to the North Pole star. You'll be able to see the radiant point just south of Polaris on the morning of the 24th of May. So this is primarily a Northern Hemisphere event. This could be the beginning of a series of meteor showers that will occur every year from now on. So get up nice and early and see possibly the meteor shower of a lifetime. Now these things are very difficult to predict and people tend to over predict uh, these sorts of events. But even if it's only a few hundred an hour, it's going to be quite a spectacular event. Hope your skies are clear that morning. On May 25th, it will be your best chance to see Mercury as a morning star. 
On that date, it will be at its maximum elongation from the sun, so it will be at its highest in the sky. Perhaps you can combine this with a meteor watch on the 24th. Mercury won't be quite so high, but it still should be visible. You can follow me on Twitter for breaking news of uh, happenings on the sun, and I will put out uh, uh, periodic videos when the sun gets a bit more active. So I'll leave you to listen to the last strains of Eine Kleine Nacht music. <laughs>